after you are finished with a sketch. This is a process that I've used time after time to adding materiality, light, and depth into a finished rendering. And what I want to show you, this is a process that you can do in less than 60 minutes, and the result is well worth it, in my opinion. So I hope you enjoyed this condensed tutorial, and let me know what you think in the comments below. Now we can see that I'm essentially done with the drawing process. I can actually start coloring. The strategy really right now is to color the area that may have the biggest area. So that to me naturally is the cabinetry. And I can also just use my assisted drawing function. This is going to make sure when I color, this is gonna be a straight line and that is going to give me more of a continuous look. So right now, we really just wanna make sure that our color are going to be, be within the border. I have this center island and you can see that I'm going over the the chairs that are gonna be in the island and that's okay because what we're gonna do later there is get rid of the parts where they are going over the chairs. Let's go ahead and select a bigger brush and let's go ahead and go over this. Remember, big brush strokes and don't worry about going over the lines. That's kind of the beauty of doing this on Procreate is you don't have to be scared of making mistakes. For the next layer, we're gonna do another big area and I'm gonna select a different color. I'm gonna use it for the wood floor that are gonna go into place. This part of this is gonna go over the cabinetry and here we're gonna spend a little bit of time to delete those areas that went into the cabinetry. So I'm gonna take a eraser tool and I might actually just erase with the same pen as I was coloring. And then I am really just going to erase where the wood layer went over the cabinetry. So what I'm gonna do here is actually just erase everything that went over the border a little bit, including this side. Uh, the next big area that I think I wanna do is this back of this wall, the ceiling, and then the textures. The wall are mostly likely going to be a like a white color. We're gonna use a color that has a little bit of warmth to it, just for the sake of presentation. And we're gonna do the entire wall because as you can see this far, the layer above this layer essentially will be the decors, the wood shelves, that is going to cover up this layer. You can see this is going over the cabinetry a little bit. That's okay, because we're just gonna take our eraser tool and erase the part that went over like we did with the floor. We're gonna take a quick second to get rid of the extra bit of color and on this side, do the same. Get the extra bit of color with the wall. Let's do the remaining textures before we start doing the little things like the entourage and the decors. I'm gonna make the wood siding above this shelf and the backsplash the same tone. Let's go over and do this bench, which is also gonna be wood. And that may have a slightly different color than the wood floor. So I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do everything in here as wood. And then we are going to color the pillows and the books in between the shelves later when we do our final entourage layer. And then above that are two floating wood shelves. So we're gonna do those two in the same wood color as well. And then we have other wood part in this drawing as well. And those are gonna be the wood window frame. This floating shelf, that's gonna have a wood accent. And the pots and pans, they can be different color design wise. I want this to stand out just to give the island a little bit more interest on this side. And that's part of the design idea. And one that's kind of tough to be more kind of like a quart material or even maybe a soapstone material. I'm gonna create another layer. I'm gonna call it miscellaneous. So what I'm gonna do right now is I am going to do the, the sconce. And I think I want the sconce maybe to be like a darker color with a back plate do some pots maybe maybe this is a cast iron maybe it's like a nice red cast iron could be any color i'm trying to get a couple of different accents in here i think i would actually want my this palette to look a little bit earthy and muted just a lot of flexibility in brooms 
to change these colors later on using the saturation adjustments. Maybe a little red. Maybe these are all books. Books. So the spine of the book, you can make one color. And these are probably gonna be, you know, the owner's cookbooks. Maybe we'll do a bluish tone here and here. If you went overboard, that's fine. We can come back and just edit the part where they went overboard. And then maybe a lighter shade for this pillow. And then maybe a red pillow, or orange pillow on this side. And then we have some baskets down below. The sink is gonna be like a farmhouse sink. So that's gonna be exposed on the outside. And we're just gonna give this enough color and then we can come back in and do that later. Let's not forget our chairs. Let's do our chairs. Chairs maybe is a leather-ish chair. Let's go ahead and do the top of the chairs right here, like this. And the legs can be a different color, but this is the top of the chair. And hardware should probably all be a similar color. Let's make them black. Could be brass, but let's make them a darker color. It's very easy to swap out this black color to something else. Let's add a little bit of warmth to the, the lighting, almost as if they're turned on. And that's just gonna give it a little bit of contrast between the wall behind it. Okay, we're missing windows. I'm gonna give the glass just a little bit of a bluish tint to it. And we can tone this down if this is actually way too blue but just to make it look like it's glass. Let's give it a little bit of a blue undertone. At this point, I think what we wanna do is just to further refine this a little bit more. And I'm gonna start first tweaking the color. So for example, the windows are definitely a little too saturated. The flooring may be a little bit different. And then the wood bench, and then the wood throughout the house, Maybe make that darker too. Yeah, maybe a little bit more muted. So you can see there's a lot of flexibility if you set up your layer right this way. I'm gonna take my miscellaneous layer where I put all the colors on the entourage and I'm gonna tone that down a bit. Maybe I'm gonna increase its brightness. I'm definitely gonna tone it down a little bit. Next, let's go ahead and add a little bit more color to, to the plates behind it. These are the things that will give it a little bit more depth. Just gonna make sure that the plates behind it are a little darker because you are seeing through the glass. I'm gonna pretend there's some oranges, maybe on top of there, maybe on top of this plate, and then I'm probably missing some color here and there that I can add in slowly. You can see my cabinets are bleeding into the floor. And then, then again, part of my floor is also missing too. So I am gonna take my marker again and I'm just gonna fill in these areas where it doesn't have any color. This is actually the layer from SketchUp exported with just shadow turned on. I'm gonna make this into a multiply. That is gonna blend it much better with a shadow. So there's maybe two ways to vary the opacity of this or the intensity of this. I'm gonna use my curve adjustment. I'm gonna see if this curve adjustment is going to work. That may be the best I can do. I'm gonna leave that for now, but you can see what this layer does is that it's gonna give you a sense of light into the room. What I'm gonna do is insert a file and and this is a paper texture. What I wanna do is bring in this paper texture and overlay it on top of the drawing. So when I overlay this in a blending mode, what this is gonna do is it's going to bring in the texture of the watercolor paper. And with this, I have a little bit of leeway to make sure how much of the texture is actually gonna be in the paper. This is going to tweak, by tweaking the curve, this is going to tweak the intensity of the paper texture. Maybe right around here that I'm happy with. And I can actually just maybe bring the opacity down a little bit just to make sure that paper texture is really well integrated. I think the, the base is making the drawing a little darker than what I would like. So what I'm gonna do is maybe just tone down this shadow layer a little bit to about this point. 
I think the lighting could probably be a little brighter. So in the miscellaneous, what I'm gonna do is take a take my marker brush. I'm actually gonna give this a little bit more glow, glow to it. So a little bit more warmth is what I need so they stand out a little bit more. So you can see that you can tweak a lot of these things after you've done it the first time. If you're not happy with it, you can either add color to it or you can tweak the depth by giving it a little bit more shade. Now there's definitely things that I can do more to, to tweak this further. And I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna continue doing that. But you can tell from the beginning to end, we've spent approximately an hour and 46 minutes. So this is the total amount of time, including the drawing part. But the coloring part, we're actually just a little bit under an hour. So you can see how effective this can be if you spend an hour to give the black and white line weight a lot more provocativeness to, to the drawing. And I think the client is going to react a lot better than the black and white in the monochromatic version of the drawing. This is meant to be done quick. If you don't like certain things, you can definitely take it out or redraw it or just re-edit it over time. Now, there's a lot of this that you can see that even I am experimenting with for the first time. So that nothing is set in stone. We'll do the same thing with this little bit of glow idea to the windows too. And maybe that's gonna give it a sense of light coming here. So right now I'm bringing in the highlights and later I will do the, the darker. I'm almost like I'm painting in the my, my drawing. So this side of the house naturally will be a little darker because you know, the windows on this side. So what I can try to do is actually select a darker brush and I'll manually darken the cabinets a little bit more. Let me show you the width and without. You can see that difference is very subtle. It is making this side of the house a little darker. So let's bring that underneath the light layer. So this group is comprised of the watercolor paper texture and the lighting, the lighting effect, and then the lighting glow of the fixtures in, in the space. If you have any questions, make sure you leave them in the comments below and I will try my best to get back to you.